Sorry for the slightly later than normal upload today. I had a doctor's appointment early this morning and everything is good. So don't worry about your boy, but I don't really like waking up early and I fell back asleep when I got home, but I'm healthy as an ox and that's all that matters. But you're not here to hear about that. You're here to hear about what the title of this video is. Now you might remember earlier this week, I made a video talking about some real Nintendo Switch 2 related leaks coming from a data breach at the Pokemon company. Now there were lots of questions on to whether or not all this information was valid. Game Freak ended up coming out and talking about it a bit, which clearly gave validity to the situation. And of course, I'm not advocating for any sort of data breaching or anything like that. If you do stuff like that, you're kind of stupid and you're probably gonna get caught and it's not gonna be a good situation for you. But if the information is out there, you know, we're just talking about video game related stuff involving these leaks. So it is what it is. You can hate it. You can love it. It doesn't matter to me. I just find it interesting to talk about. But one thing I noticed within all of that video were that a lot of people were very like hesitant to believe anything in that video. And people were like, oh, this isn't real, blah, blah, blah. But there was one YouTube account. I believe their name is Thorny Fox, who was just going through and being like, hey, no, this is real stuff. What is wrong with you? And then when Game Freak came out and made a statement on it saying that this did indeed happen, this individual was going back and being like, where's your apology for RGT? And I just laugh every time I see it. So shout out to Thorny Fox for sticking up for your boy, because I'm not going to get in the comment section and do that. People can believe me or not believe me. But we have been getting lots of additional things out of that. Allegedly, there's a Pokemon Legend ZA leak of like a playable build out there and stuff like that that people have. There's like one is like a PC build. One is like an early Switch build. It is a very, very messy situation when it comes to all the information that is coming out. But I want to talk about something that I can't completely confirm, but kind of looking at the track record of the account that is saying this, it leads me to believe that there is some truth to it because they have the information. They have actually posted things allegedly from the leak that are indeed valid things that were talked about within this information. So I'm putting a question mark next to the title of this because I, I'm not 100% sure the validity of it but i tend to lean more so on the side that this is real so this is coming to us from centro leaks they are as they say the biggest source of pokemon leaks and they constantly do things like this and they do have the information and some of the data that has been put out there and according to their research ounce which is the nintendo switch 2 we talked about that being the code name for the system because you know knock three times when you want an ounce and then you get an ounce you dap the boy up and then you go on your way but ounce aka the nintendo switch 2 seems to use the same tools and rom format that nintendo currently uses for the switch roms meaning that the roms are still nsps but obviously they have new encryption keys that only Nintendo has. So that says quite a few things. If this is actually true, this says a lot of things. So let's go back a little bit here. What is an NSP? That is a file format for Nintendo Switch ROMs. If you've ever dabbled your, your, <laughs> your toes into the water of, of piracy or whatever, you would know that an NSP is a Nintendo Switch ROM, and that is one of the things that is used in order to play Nintendo Switch games on different devices or on your PC. So the fact that it's using the same NSP kind of makes sense as to why Nintendo has been going so heavy after all of the Nintendo Switch emulators now, later on in the game. Because I think if this upcoming system didn't use NSPs, didn't use the same sort of file format, I don't necessarily think Nintendo would have gone as hard after Yuzu and Ryu Jinx now. Because if the Switch is on its way out, like, you know, it's not that big of a deal. It's not, it's not that big of a pressing issue because you have this new system coming on the horizon. But if it's using the same file format... Well, that would mean that it wouldn't take very long to figure out how to, you know, make this work 
on the emulator that also happens to work for Nintendo Switch One games. Now, the encryption keys are something that you actually have to like get on your own, either dump your own keys from your Nintendo Switch or find kind of back end websites. If you ever watch like a Nintendo Switch emulation video, they never tell you where to get the keys because that's a definite like gray area, no, no sort of situation. So Nintendo only has them now which could mean that that is the uh, preventative measure for this. Now, will those keys eventually get out there? You know, who's really to say? But the thing I find the most interesting about this is if it's using the same file format, in theory, that could mean a couple different things. And, you know, this is just me kind of speculating here a bit. But I do feel like if it's using the same file format, the same NSPs, that should confirm backwards compatibility and i know for a lot of people backwards compatibility has been a foregone conclusion since you know it, people started talking about the system but i was never fully on board with that just because i wasn't 100 percent sure and i think from a business perspective when you see a lot of wii u games being very successful on the nintendo switch from a business perspective that does have to be attractive to nintendo from a consumer perspective, you of course want backwards compatibility. You want to be able to play your library of Nintendo Switch 1 games on your upcoming system because it's not like Switch 1 games are just going to cease to exist. Like, yeah, maybe Nintendo won't be making quite as many because they've moved on, but a lot of third-party companies are still going to make games for the Switch 1. So if you want to play those games, whether they're bigger titles or smaller indie titles, whatever the case may be, if you're using the same file format, that would mean that you could play those newer games for the Switch 1 on the Switch 2. But what I find very interesting about this is this kind of opens the door to something that I didn't think Nintendo would possibly do. Because from the business perspective, once again, I didn't I didn't know whether or not to believe it. And I'm not completely sure I'm 100% sold on it. But what if, what if this means that you could do upgrade pads for a Switch 1 game on a Switch 2, or you could use the DLSS to enhance your Nintendo Switch 1 games on your Switch 2. So what I'm saying is, you know, something like what you saw with Breath of the Wild. You know, Breath of the Wild is a great game. It runs a little bit choppy, though. I mean, you know, you could see people playing it on PC at 4K, 60 frames per second. And Nintendo's kind of gone after some of those people that have done that, which is a weird situation in and of itself. But what if the, the mindset is, well, I'm going to be able to pop my Breath of the Wild cartridge into my Switch 2 and play an enhanced version of that game because of the DLSS, because my Switch 1 games work on my Switch 2. I'm not saying that's going to be the case, okay? Because Nintendo could just re-release, you know, Breath of the Wild Complete Edition or Breath of the Wild 4K Edition or something that is an enhanced version, and then your Switch version of the game running on the Switch 2 still just runs as the vanilla version. There definitely is a balance between you know the the consumer experience and the business experience because as a consumer you ob that's what you obviously want you want to be able to pop in super mario odyssey into your switch 2 and have enhanced visuals and have higher frame rates and higher resolutions all the time like it's a it would be a dream come true without having to do an upgrade path for things and i think that's a possibility you know is it a big possibility i'm not sure I'm not sure, but this definitely kind of leads me to believe that maybe that is a thing. And if that is a thing, that's a huge win for Nintendo because you're seeing things get enhanced by new technology. Xbox One games got bumps on the Xbox Series X. You know, some companies charged, some companies didn't. Same thing with PlayStation. Some companies charged, some were just free update pads. With the PlayStation 5 Pro, going to run your PS5 games better than your baseline PS5 in most situations. So it is a there is a trend to go on with this, but it would be uncharted territory for Nintendo to do it. But I think there's a chance. I think there's a chance if this information is accurate and they are still using NSPs for the Nintendo Switch 2, 
because obviously, you know, the, the whole thing is based on the fact that there are builds of Switch 2 versions or ounce versions, I should say, of the uh, next gen of Pokemon games and stuff like that that were found in the data files, which has been an actual confirmed thing. So there is a little bit of something to go on with that. It is just kind of speculation because you got to look back at the source, but the source does seem to have all the information and has been releasing some of the information. So I don't know. I don't know. Maybe some of this is just a pipe dream. You know, maybe it sounds a little too good to be true, or maybe it is the actual truth. Let me know where you stand on this in the comments section down below. Do you think that you know, that's the reason why Nintendo's been going after the emulator so hard is because it's using the same file format. Would that make sense? Because that makes perfect sense to me. And how do you think that will extend to Switch 1 games running on the Switch 2? Do you think there will be enhanced versions that will release as physical games and you got to pay full price? Or do you think popping in your smelly Breath of the Wild cartridge from 2017 is going to run an enhanced version on this next system? And as always, guys, thank you for checking out this video. If you are new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button, like, comment, and share. Hit the bell as well. And as always, I'll catch you guys on the next video. Later.